Hey everybody, it's Diane Gale here from the blog and YouTube channel Sustainable Slow Living and today I want to talk to you about how you can make the most out of your farmer's market visit. Farmer's markets are a great way to improve the quality and nutritional value of the food that you're eating and that um, if you're preparing food for a family, the food that they're eating. And um, it should never feel like a chore to go to the market. It should actually be an experience that you look forward to and enjoy at least once a week. So let's get right into how to make the most of your farmer's market visit. And the first thing that I want to talk to you about is getting to know your farmer. I think a lot of times people hesitate to talk to the farmer when they're at a market because they're busy. And it's true that a lot of times they can't just have a long-winded conversation with you. But you can take your questions to your farmer at the market every single week. Questions about all kinds of things. Questions about how their food is produced, which it's very important for you to know because not all farmers that are there produce organically. And some farmers that are there produce organically, but they don't pay for the label because the labeling is too expensive. Um, you can talk to them about how to prepare the food. Um, you can talk to them about how to preserve it for the winter. And farmers gener genuinely, generally <laughs> like to um, talk with people. They like to build community. It's part of what they do. They like to network. Um, and it's important to them. And it should be important to you too. Um, so don't be afraid to talk to your farmer. Get to know your farmers. Choose the farmers that are practicing farming, um, yeah, you know, farming practices that you approve of and then support them. Um, and I will tell you this right now, if you try to talk to a farmer and he tries to brush you off or treats you like he's not interested in answering your questions, then turn around, walk away, and you find yourself another farmer because there are plenty of farmers out there that have a completely different attitude than that. And that's who you want to support, that's who you want to learn from. So your first tip is to get to know your farmer so that you know what you're buying and you understand the quality of it and just so that you can learn from him. He has a lot to offer you. Another thing that you want to do to get the most out of your farmer's market visit is to try to arrive early. Um, I just went to a farmer's market yesterday morning and I was there 45 minutes after they opened and there were quite a few things that they were already sold out of. Now that might not be as common in a bigger area or where farms are bigger. I am way up north. I remember that that was not as common when I was in Pennsylvania or when I was in California, but it was still common enough. So get there early so that you can get the best selection and some of the best prices. But please, again, don't just make what you purchase about the price, make it about the farmer. Um, and yet, you'll find great farmers who have better prices. It is a competitive market, so you want to check those things as well. Another thing about arriving early is um, that if you're interested in making bulk purchases of food, oftentimes farmers will bring um, bushels and you know quantities of vegetables and you can purchase those and you can take them home and you can preserve them for the winter so that you have that food to feed yourself and your family in the winter months when like garden fresh farm fresh food isn't always readily available to you and with all of that said let me also say that no matter what time of day you can get to the farmers market go if you can't get there early go anyway at a different time of day. You never know what deal you might get. Sometimes at the end of the day you can get deals as well because if farmers have products left over, they don't necessarily want to take those products home to, to um, feed to or if it's enough to process for their family for the winter because they already have all that going on. and. They, they don't have the time or the space for that in their schedule. So don't not go because you weren't able to get there early. No matter what time of day it is, it is definitely worth going and purchasing food that provides you with more nutritional value than what you can buy in the grocery store. So head out to the farmer's market on farmer's market day 
whenever you can get there. Make sure that you take your own bags. Try to go with an idea of what it is that you're going to want to purchase. Um, if you can, make part of the experience walking around the market and seeing everything that everybody has and kind of getting a mental picture of what it is that you need for what it is that you're going to prepare over the next few days, three, four days, um, or throughout the week because there are some vegetables that last that long. So then you'll have a better idea of what's available, you'll know right where it is, and the second time that you go around you can pick up everything that it is that you want to pick up. And then once you have made your purchases, um, you want to bring them home and there again you want to try to get the most out of your farmer's market visit. So um, it, it is worth your time and your effort to go online and look at vegetables and what they need for storage because throwing them all in the fridge is not the way to get the most out of them. Um, a couple things that I can tell you just to give you an idea of uh, how varied it can be to care for them is you know potatoes and onions aren't something that really need to go in the fridge. They like cold, dry, dark storage and they'll last a lot longer. Um, they'll maintain a lot of their flavor a lot longer. Um, what else? So, oh, carrots and beets are something, they're two of the vegetables that a lot of times you'll buy at the farmer's market and they still have the greens on them. And um, those greens are edible. So you can go ahead and cut those off and you can use them in sautés early in the week because greens are never going to last as long as the rest of your produce. Um, but you do want to cut them off the beets and the carrots before you store them. So um, these are the kind of things you'll learn online. A tomato. A tomato should never go in the refrigerator. It depletes it of all of its flavor and it makes its texture grainy. Um, my understanding, if I'm correct, is that in Italy, you know, they would they would just shake their head if they saw you try to put a tomato in the refrigerator. That's not where tomatoes go. So again, just research a little bit, learn what to do with your produce when you bring it home, and um, you'll get the most out of it that way. Another thing that it's important for you to know is that when you bring everything home, um, in, if you're inclined to try to prep ahead, say you're going to make a stew, so you're figuring you're going to chop up your vegetables so that when you make that stew three days from now, um, you'll have everything all ready to go. Avoid that if you can, because as soon as you start to chop up that vegetable, you're exposing more of its surface to air. And that's going to cause um, many of them to brown. It's also going to cause them to spoil quicker and it will cause them to lose their flavor. With that said, I will also say that there was a time when I was shopping the farmer's markets when I was a single mother um, and it was just me, you know, working and raising my son and I was doing it all alone. I didn't have... Um, I didn't have any help and I often would bring home my farmers market produce and I would cut things up to take to work during the week um, because if I didn't I might not get to them and then I was looking at spoilage so you know kind of weigh what works best for you try to avoid cutting things up if you can but if you are very very busy and what is going to help you get your farmer's market produce eaten is cutting it up. And go ahead and do that. That is clearly the smarter route. Um, you will, you know, you'll save money by reducing waste in a different way. And probably my favorite way to get the most out of a farmer's market visit is to use the market to elevate your connection to your food. So see the market as an experience. Like I said at the beginning of the video, this should be something you look forward to. Um, often there's music, there's often, uh, the, the market that I went to this past week was not my regular market and I had an amazing beef hand pie. There's usually um, food there that's already prepared. Just the visual 
um, it's the visual appearance of all of the garden fresh produce and flowers and herbs and all of the different colors and you know the jars of jams and jellies and relishes and all kinds of preserves just that alone is very visually pleasing and there's all kinds of scents and if there's prepared food there's all kinds of tastes and you can connect again with your farmer you people at farm markets often want to share tips and tricks and recipes and you can connect with your food and with your community in a way that matters and I think that that's something that it's very important for us to start to try to do more and more of um, because of the, the, the big, the industrial agricultural system that's been put in place to produce our food is not preparing food that's suitable for consumption and definitely it is not suitable um, to provide nutrition to our bodies. So I think that it's really important that we get back to small farming on every level that we can and going to the farmer's market is one of the ways that you can spend your dollars, which is pretty much like making a vote as to how it is you would like for um, our food production system to change. And we may only be changing it on a small level, but that level um, has every, I have every reason to believe that it is going to continue to blossom. So um, make the market a way for you to experience um, the roots of food, your food, and you know where it comes from and what to do with it, how best to prepare it, and and to learn about new foods. A lot of times you'll see things there that that farmers have that you've never seen before, and you can take something home and you can try a new dish, and that's always a good day. So those are the tips and tricks that I have for you today. Um, and before I sign off. I want to show you what I got at the farmer's market yesterday. Usually my table would be more colorful because I would have picked up a lot more tomatoes. That was all they had available was five of these little guys. <laughs> um, my table would also be twice as full because I would spend twice as much as what I spent at this market yesterday. This was not my regular market and they didn't have everything that my market usually does. The market that I go to here at home is um, an Amish stand. It's a big Amish stand. And then additionally, there are little Amish stands at all of you know the different Amish houses, so I sometimes stop at them. But the big Amish stand that I go to, um, they produce a much wider variety this early in the year, and I went an hour south, which you would think would make a difference um, because the climate is warmer, but um, it, they really didn't have as much. So I only spent about half as much, but I thought sharing it with you would give you an idea of what it costs to go to the farmer's market. And it's truly not that much more expensive than the grocery store. So I spent $56. I got two dozen of uh, free range organic fed chicken eggs. We eat a lot of eggs. This is probably more than a week's worth, but just more. I got a package of two turkey thighs from the same farmer. So he doesn't um, he doesn't pasture raise all of his birds. He raises some of them in a barn, but he does allow them to go out to grass feed sometimes. Um, he doesn't keep them solely in the barn. And then I got a package of chicken thighs. These, by the way, I froze them when I brought them home yesterday. I don't even know why. I guess I wasn't thinking. So they were not, they were fresh and perfect for coming home and just cooking right on the grill. I had some meat already thawed at home that I needed to cook. So I threw these in the freezer. I got um, a head of Napa cabbage. I have never worked with Napa cabbage before, but I've been wanting to. And I paid $4 for this little head of Napa cabbage, and they've been 5 or $6 in the grocery store, so that was actually a deal. Although I never complain about paying a farmer because of, well, all of the things that I just told you in this video. Um, I got a nice bunch of Swiss chard. My son loves Swiss chard, so we'll probably use this for dinner tomorrow night because you, you'll want to use your greens and stuff first. That's when they're freshest. 
I got some green beans so that we can do something fabulous with green beans one night with dinner this week. And I got some lettuce and the tomatoes and a couple pickling cucumbers um, to make salads. This will probably make us, you know, two, three, maybe four side salads. It kind of depends. The head of lettuce is smaller than I'm used to. Um, and the pickling cucumbers I always buy for my salads all through the summer because they have more flavor and they're so crisp. Um, so don't be afraid to pick those up. You really only need like one of them to make two little side salads and you're good to go. So that was my haul from the farmer's market yesterday. Like I said, it was $56. Um, with the meat included and the green beans which are generally a little bit more expensive because of what they take to produce, I think that's a good haul. And again, I will head out to my Amish market. I think they're open tomorrow's Monday so I'm pretty sure they're open tomorrow and I will pick, in, I pick up some things to fill in the gaps for our meals there. Um, between this and the homemade bread that we make at the house and you know we already have pork and beef from our own animals um, we we really have our food for the week for about somewhere between a hundred and hundred and fifty dollars um, and you know there's little things we pick up at the grocery store like some pasta and some rice and things like that but we don't pick up a lot so that gives you an idea of what it can, will cost you to shop at the farmer's market. It's pretty comparable to the grocery store, which is pretty impressive for how much better it is for you. So as always, I'm going to drop a link to the blog post that I wrote to go along with this video. There is more information available in that post if you want to go and check it out. Um, and it has been great having you here with me. It is always great having you here with me, and we are going to get together again really soon.